In this video, I will demonstrate how you can build DSS software and its dependencies, use DSS Ansible to deploy DSS software to a cluster, and finally, how to use DSS software using some basic tools. Navigate to the DSS repo at github.com slash openmpdk slash DSS. The link is in the description. Build using CentOS 7.8 minimal install. It's recommended to build on a machine with at least 32 gigabytes of memory and 48 cores if possible. Install the build dependencies as described on the GitHub README. You can copy and paste each command one at a time or paste them all into your terminal to install them all at once. From your terminal, clone the DSS repo. Again, the link is in the description. Then cd into the DSS directory. Next, follow the build procedure outlined in the README. Before building DSS, we need to compile some dependencies from source. First build GCC using the build GCC shell script found in the scripts directory. Depending on how many cores your system has, this process could take an hour or longer. Next, install the GCC RPM we just built. It is staged under the DSS Ansible slash artifacts directory. Next, build AWS SDK for C++ using the build AWS SDK shell script found inside the script directory. Next, install the AWS SDK for C++ RPM we just built. It is staged under the DSS Ansible slash artifacts directory. Finally, build DSS using the build all shell script. It can be found inside the scripts directory. This script will also build the 5.1 kernel from source. Therefore, this step may take an hour or longer depending on how many cores are on your system. Scroll to the bottom of the DSS repo's readme and click the link to the DSS Ansible readme. Follow the directions to install the latest Ansible 2.9 version. Use Python 3 to install pip, then use Python 3's pip to install the latest version of Ansible 2.9. If using Python version 3.6, you may need to use the alternate URL to install pip. Finally, use Python 3's pip to install the required Python modules. You'll need to install a recent version of NetAdder, Jinja2, Paramico, and JMESPath. Before deploying DSS, an inventory file must be created to define the cluster we are deploying to. I am going to deploy a co-located cluster of four VMs. This means the NVM EOF target and host will be deployed to the same VMs. Additionally, I will deploy the client application packages to these VMs as well. The VMs I have provisioned for this cluster are running CentOS 7.8 minimal install. Each has six vCPU cores and 32 gigabytes of memory. Additionally, a single virtual NVMe SSD is provisioned to each host, as well as a 100 gigabit virtual function backed by a physical Mellanox ConnectX adapter using SRIOV. The VMs have already had their management and high-speed RDMA IP addresses configured by a system administrator. To accomplish this deployment, a list of the four VMs must be included both under the servers as well as the client's groups. For each host, a list of RDMA IP addresses must be provisioned to the Rocky V2 IP list var. 
This list of IPs defines the backend networking for the NVM EOF subsystems, as well as the IPs where the subsystems are mounted. Also for each host, a list of TCP IP addresses must be provided for the TCP IP list var. This list of IPs defines the front end network where client applications will access the MinIO endpoints. I'll include a few additional variables for this deployment. The Ansible user var defines the username which will be used to communicate with each host over SSH from the Ansible controller. The target firmware version var defines the firmware string for the NVMe SSDs on the host, which the DSS subsystems will be allocated to. A list of firmware strings can be used if there are multiple SSD models. The DSS target mode var is set to KV block VM, which is a special mode used for virtual machine nodes or physical hosts with less than 256 gigabytes of memory. Note that this setting will result in suboptimal performance. Finally, the InfiniBand driver var is set to inbox, which specifies the inbox InfiniBand driver. If omitted, Ansible will attempt to use the Mellanox OFED driver instead. Before deploying, ensure that your Ansible host is able to connect to each host in your Ansible inventory via passwordless SSH. To do this, you may need to use the SSH copy ID command to copy your user's public key to each of the remote hosts. You can test the passwordless SSH connection to all of the hosts in your inventory by executing an Ansible ad hoc ping command. Once the inventory file is complete, execute the configure host playbook to install all DSS software dependencies to the cluster. This playbook will deploy the 5.1 kernel, as well as configure optimal network tuning settings. Next, execute the Deploy DSS Software Playbook. This will deploy the DSS software stack and bring the cluster online. Now that the cluster is deployed, cluster performance can be validated using the test S3 benchmark playbook. As I previously mentioned, performance is expected to be low when using the KV block VM DSS target mode var. Finally, I will demonstrate some basic S3 operations on the DSS cluster using the MinIO MC client. First, open an SSH connection to one of the server nodes in your deployed cluster. Then CD into user DSS MKV MinIO. Execute MC config host list to view the pre-configured MinIO aliases. Ansible will have configured a MinIO alias starting with local underscore. This represents the DSS MinIO endpoint running on this host. I will create a bucket by executing mcmb, the name of the alias, slash the name of the bucket. In this case, I will call it test bucket.
Next, I will create a small text file by echoing hello world to a file test.txt. Then I will put the text file as an object in the DSS minio cluster using MC copy. Now we can list the object using mcls. Or I can display the contents of the file using mccat. Finally, I can delete the object using mcrm. And with mcls, I can verify that the file is deleted. This concludes the demonstration. With this information, you should now be able to build, deploy, and use DSS software.